Often, selfishness is considered to be a character flaw. Since childhood, you're taught to be unselfish, to be less self-centered, and to play well with others. It's the belief that for a society to get along, we must forego certain aspects of ourselves, certain likes or dislikes, in order to create unity. By this standard, it's easy to see why selfishness is considered to be a bad flaw. But for Nietzsche, selfishness wasn't an evil, it was actually a great good. He believed that selfishness was something that we should take care of and use, instead of disregarding it. Nietzsche said, and at that time it also happened, and rarely it happened for the first time, that his word pronounced selfishness blessed, the wholesome, healthy selfishness that wells from a powerful soul, from a powerful soul to which belongs the high body, beautiful, triumphant, refreshing, around which everything becomes a mirror, the supple, persuasive body, the dancer whose parable and epitome is a self-enjoying soul. The self-enjoyment of such bodies and souls calls itself virtue. It may seem odd to have words like healthy, wholesome, virtue, and powerful associated with selfishness. However, it makes sense when you understand the meaning behind Nietzsche's use of selfishness. For Nietzsche, there is nothing better than to live a life that is one's own, a life in which you use your will to create instead of just following what other people consider to be virtuous or moral. It's in this creation that you must be selfish. You use your selfishness as a filter or a screen to allow only those things that bring self-enjoyment or meaning into your life. This is your own happiness, the things that you consider to be good for you or evil for you. It's a personal creation of life that you must seek, and in order to do that, you have to be selfish. Nietzsche said, and what was considered virtue and called virtue, was playing wicked tricks on selflessness and selfless, And that is how all these world-weary cowards and cross-marked spiders wanted themselves for good reason. For Nietzsche, selfless and sham went hand in hand. He believed this because most people's knowledge doesn't come from their own experience. Rather, people's knowledge comes from the experiences of other people who have used their creative will to create their own meanings. So it's almost this false virtue when someone claims to be selfless. But in reality, it's cowardice and lack of will that makes the individual conform. It's a type of self-love that Nietzsche is trying to teach. You look out for yourself and you create your own life, which includes principles or actions that you agree with, and you protect this in a selfish manner from outside influence. With this, you set yourself apart from the herd and get your own path in life. Nietzsche said, One must learn to love oneself, thus I teach, with a wholesome and healthy love, so that one can bear to be with oneself and need not roam. Otherwise, you may live a burdensome life and find that these burdens are not even your own, but rather they are adopted from others. Nietzsche said, Yes, life is a grave burden, but only man is a grave burden for himself. That is because he carries on his shoulders too much that is alien to him. Like a camel, he kneels down and lets himself be well loaded. Especially the strong reverent spirit that would bear much. He loads too many alien grave words and values on himself, and then life seems a desert to him. What Nietzsche calls for is uncomfortable because you have to examine your own life. Many of us, myself included, follow what our loved ones tell us. This comes from a good place because they want us to be happy or stable. And in order to meet these expectations, we begin to take on a burden that's not our own. We get trapped in a rat race which we have no desire to participate in, but because we don't want to seem selfish, we continue down this path. To disturb this way of living is difficult, but so is being an individual. The safe path is following other people. The unknown is following your own will. If the goal is to experience life fully, That requires selfishness on your behalf.